Have you ever imagined what it looks like inside the mind of a teenager? I would suspect it looks something like this. In this day and age, it's difficult for teenagers, and I think even more with social media and COVID. I'm gonna tell you a story that I've never told in this level of detail about a 16-year-old girl who graduated from Seminole High School back in the 90s. The story takes place during her junior year of high school, so exciting things are happening. She just got on the varsity soccer team. Her grades are excellent, and really, life is perfect. The only thing that she has to worry about is her homework and if the boy she has a crush on is gonna ask her out. But then, she wakes up one morning and life seems very different. She's having trouble remembering almost everything that's happening. She goes to school and as she's walking through the hallways, she's having difficulty finding what class she should be in. And yet she can't remember what class she just came from. She woke up, it's like she woke up and she was in the middle of this nightmare where she couldn't recall anything. She decides that she's gonna to go to soccer practice and she anticipates that things will normalize when she gets there. But as she's having difficulty dribbling the ball between cones, her coach is getting frustrated, wondering why she's not trying harder at that drill. A drill that a week or two ago, she could do with ease. Fear and anxiety set in. Her grades are plummeting and her days now are spent navigating how to hide what is going on so she doesn't look different from her friends, especially the stutter that has started while she's speaking. It's important to blend in in high school because kids can be cruel. She carpools to school with a group of girls, and while she's standing around one day, she forgets if she had driven that day. One of the boys in the group said, you're so stupid, you can't even remember if you drove your car to school today, and walks away laughing. Unfortunately, that's how she felt, stupid. She was 16 years old, she just got her driver's license, and she couldn't even remember where she parked her car, so she was terrified to go anywhere by herself. Over the next few months, things continue to get worse. Her parents are awesome, but they're wondering why she keeps coming up with convenient excuses as to why she hasn't done her chores. Little do they know they haven't received all the messages her teachers have left on the answering machine because she has become a magician at coming home and deleting them off before they get home. Those are the same teachers that are calling her up in class and asking if she's doing drugs or if there's anything bad happening at home that she wants to talk about. It's around this time that she falls into a deep depression. Her immune system breaks down so much that she's diagnosed with mononucleosis. And her doctor says that she needs to stay home for six weeks on virtual school. At that time, there was no video or anything like that, really just a speaker phone. And she's happy to hide away at home. Her mother knows something is going on but she hasn't quite figured out what it is, so she makes a doctor's appointment. After she recovers from the mononucleosis, she goes to the doctor. They do a scan of her brain, where they put a bunch of electrodes on, and she actually looks like she stuck her finger in a light socket when they're finished, her hair sticking out at all angles from the sticky goo. But the doctor is able to give her answers. The doctor tells her she's had a brain bleed, and that she's suffering from post-traumatic head injury. You would think that by hearing this news and knowing that what was going on wasn't her fault would ease her mind. But then the doctor tells her that the brain takes years to heal. Now she knows that really this is the beginning. The nightmare has just begun and it wasn't ending anytime soon. What would you do if you were her? She can't imagine going through one more day of this, much less years. What would you say if I told you she got through college and that today she's a cardiovascular service line manager for a large 15 hospital system? 
standing in the shoes of that 16-year-old girl, I would have never thought that I could be where I am today. The story that I just shared was my story. When I was 16 years old, I was a passenger in a car accident on the way home from soccer practice. At the scene, I appeared fine to the naked eye, so they put my friend in the ambulance and she was complaining of neck pain. My parents came and picked me up and they took me to the emergency room to get checked out. Upon entering the emergency room, I was told that they asked me all the normal questions. What month is it? Can you count backwards from 100? And then I could not even perform these easy tasks. My mother told me that the emergency room was decorated all in Halloween decorations, and I couldn't even tell them that the month was October. They did a CAT scan, and they told my parents I had a concussion. And to take me home, no, nothing to monitor, nothing to look out for, but just that she can stay home from school tomorrow and rest, maybe take a week or two off from soccer. What I found out many years later is that after an accident and a head injury, a bleed sometimes will not show up for up to 48 hours. So mine was missed. These are my friends from high school that helped me get through this. And I'm still friends with all of them today and very grateful. The next three to four years after that accident were grueling. The first two, I barely remember any events. What I do remember is how alone I felt and how fun it looked like what everybody else was having. You know, it's supposed to be the best years of your life, high school. I was so angry and I felt so isolated from my friends. I kept wondering why had this happened to me? It seemed so unfair. And then I was so guilty because I was so angry. So many other people suffer much worse injuries when they have accidents. But I was able to move on from here. And I started going through the stages of grief. I decided to go to college in Tennessee to get away from it all, a fresh start. But <laughs> I'm here to tell you, whatever issues you have, they follow you wherever you go. I did, however, meet the first love of my life that helped me through much of this time. Once I hit the acceptance stage, I started investigating what had happened to me, trying to understand it better. What do I need to do to get past this? And I became fascinated by the medical field. I was blessed to be accepted into the cardiovascular technology program at Santa Fe Community College, and I graduated when I was 21 into a career that I absolutely fell in love with. I'm still extremely passionate about this today. I worked hard in the hospital, moving up to the position that I'm in now. And I think being in this accident made me more empathetic and compassionate for people. I learned to listen more and talk less. I learned that you never know what people, what is going on with somebody around you. You have no idea. So above all else, be kind. I think teenagers, more than any other age group, are stereotyped into this, oh, they're just moody. Teenagers are the greatest keepers of feelings and secrets. And now with Instagram and Snapchat, everybody's life looks so great when I know many people are probably struggling on the inside. You don't have to experience what I experienced to feel overwhelmed or hopeless or depressed. If you're feeling this way, talk to someone. It doesn't have to be a best friend. If you're feeling like things aren't getting better, talk to somebody else. It took me years to find a counselor that I finally connected with that helped me realize that I was, had this huge fear of failure and she also helped me realize my strengths. I have the luxury of looking in the rearview mirror at this point. I never would have imagined all the joy that I would have in my life, that I would be able to become a mother to two amazing children, that 
I would have a career where I learn new things every single day. I've seen beautiful places, and I've made amazing memories with friends and family. Things will get better. Nothing ever goes on the timeline that you would expect it to. That car accident was the worst and the best event of my life. I would not wish it on my worst enemy. But what it did do is it let me realize how strong I was. I had no idea the strength that I had. That persistence pays off. That out of failure and mistakes comes learning and improvement. One of my most favorite recent quotes that I heard a childhood friend say is, no one gets to the top of a mountain by being gently lowered from the clouds. You will do amazing things. And you do not know, when you're 16 years young, what that means. It will take hard work, it will take persistence, and it will take caring for people. But it will be worth it. If anything that I have said resonates with you today, know that if I can do it, you can do it. For many years, I didn't feel normal. This is actually a birthday card I got for one of my best friends that you saw in that earlier picture that I grew up with. There are people that are there for you, even though you don't feel it at the time. They are there for you. My final message would be, hold your friends and family close to your heart and share what you are feeling. I went through some dark times and I thought things could not get better, but they did. They did get better. And if someone is listening to this is feeling the same way, one day you will wake up, maybe not on the timeline you would like, but you will wake up and you will feel better and you will have a beautiful life too. Thank you.